How's everybody doing? So uh, I want to talk about um, an aspect of the hobby that probably a lot of people don't talk about that I think is worthy of mention, and it's um, momentum and distraction. Most of you know, I think, you know, what that means in the context of model railroading in this case. And what I mean by that is like not like the normal things of life like work and family and God and country. I mean just when we settle into the hobby, do we understand like the commitment that is involved in order to glean the joy and the comfort and the rewards from it? Like I think, you know, the elders, like the old, you know, masters of the hobby that came before me, I'll speak uh, in those terms. I, I don't want to speak for anybody else. I'll, I'll just share like my point of view on this. Like, you know, like John Allen, for example, like when you read those books, like you might think that they're kind of, oh boy, the hobby's evolved past this and everything, but but, you know, to, to just cast that aside and not take a read of some of those early masters is really a mistake. You know, I often wonder sometimes when people run off to buy their bundle of flex track, if they actually give any thought to the reason of modeling the track rather than just hammering it down or gluing it down to run their train, their favorite locomotive, and then one shot and it's all done. <laughs> I think it was John Armstrong. I think it was, but most certainly Paul Mallory, who understood track, model railroad track, is a model. We model track. So how often do we actually think about modeling three feet of track, like modeling it? rather than just gluing it down, adding another three foot, another three foot. I need more, I need more, I need more. Little attention is given at all to the very basis of model railroading, which is the track in which we run our favorite locomotives on. But, you know, to, to just cast that aside and not take a read of some of those early masters is really a mistake, you know. Because the wisdom and the knowledge is just invaluable, you know, to the whole hobby. Like, I think because now in, in postmodernism, I guess, or the 21st century, you know, we're so inundated with consumerism, you know, social media. And we think that we have this plethora of of info now more than we ever had before so it's bound to make the hobby better but unfortunately it doesn't if it's not used properly like it's very easy to just you know want everything to come easy you know but you know i think one of the aspects you know for me is is i get you know this incredible satisfaction and joy and comfort from the hobby by doing the hard work, you know? Like my dad told me once when I was very young, he said, son, anything worthwhile and rewarding in life takes hard work. Don't forget that. So, you know, the idea of just having everything fall on your lap, like an example would be, well, I have a lot of money, so I'm just gonna go buy a bunch of train stuff. I'm gonna buy some lumber. I have a basement in my house. I'm going to build my empire. And off we go as we serve the impulse. And at first, you're just full of passion. You know, the ideas are coming in. I'm YouTubing. I'm looking at photos. Far be it that I'd ever want to read an old stuffy John Allen book. And then before long, you know, the friends are in it too for a while. And then we're trying to, you know, employ them or get them to volunteer to help us build the empire. But the inevitable always happens. The whole thing runs out of gas. It flatlines. And down it goes, you know. And that's fine. If you enjoy that process, you know, that cycle that gets repeated probably more than it should. 
And what I mean by that is, is some will learn from that process, but some will just, it'll kill them. It'll kill it. That's it. Right, there's nothing in this hobby. It's done. I'm going to move on to another hobby. I'm going to join the gun club. I'm going to join the golf club. I'm going to join the fishing club. And on and on it goes. And there's nothing wrong with those recreations and hobbies. But if you want to fill your kit full of multiple hobbies all at the same time and try to glean the, uh, you know, the fantastic uh, rewards and joy that this hobby answers, you can just forget about it. It's not going to happen. You know, and it's like, whoa, ouch, would you, you know, are you telling me I can't have it? No, I'm not. But, you know, I've, I've actually touched so many aspects of, of hobbies throughout my life, radio control, you know, model trains, scale model ships, my second love and on and on it goes. But I had the advantage of doing it as a trade, like in, in film and entertainment industry and private collections, right? But that had its caveats as well. As I mentioned uh, earlier on, if you watch the uh, video on my homepage, you know, you'll see, you know, I, I talk a little bit about that. But, you know, realizing that building a small shelf layout or a smaller footprint and focusing in more on modeling, like learning the craft, that's where the rewards are. That's where the silver lining is. And that's where the motivation and the passion resides. And if you don't take that approach to it, then you're just going to be bouncing all over the place with half a half-baked layout. And you're going to lose interest. And uh, you're really not going to experience, you know, the true definition and meaning of model railroading. Which is a term that's been, you know, prostituted to the consumeristic, uh, ready-to-run culture in a way that really does a disservice to it. Now, you can call me an elitist or you can call me, you know, whatever you want. But then ask yourself the question, well, why do I spend the time to share all this? Like, why do I spend all my time to share to you um, what I do and why I do it and how I do it? So, you know, that's probably not the fairest way of dealing with that question. But for me, is, is I don't really have any other hobbies other than this. You know, and it involves more than just laying this or cutting this, right? It involves research, reading the masters, taking on a new challenge, experimenting, having a plan in place, and then focusing in on it. Uh, ignite the passion, go rail fan, take pick, like pick, pick something about the railroad that you love the most and build your layout around that. This idea of the big footprint and the big sprawling spaghetti plywood uh, Pacific or, you know, whatever is can be a trap. It can be a, a woeful trap, you know, and I'm not trying to discourage you from doing it or I'm not trying to say that there are big layouts like that that are successful and, and are fulfilling, but it's not as easy as you think. And a small layout like this is just as fulfilling as a large layout, you know. In fact, more so in many ways, because I don't have the stress of this big project that is just draining me, you know. Like I've, I'm spread out so thin that I have to now pick a hobby to divert my funds to. Because a lot of this hobby appeals to the middle class that, you know, typically are not rich or have disposable income like some do, right. But a large percent of it of the hobby just doesn't and if we learn to be a little more fiscally focused man the rewards are unbelievable you know and not to mention the idea of a barge slip and the, all the opportunities of modeling that it provides the operational potential you know and the uh, options to model are seemingly endless okay so don't be discouraged and don't be um have a closed mind to the smaller footprint and the potential that it offers. Okay? So thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned. Feel free to subscribe and I hope that you have a great day.